Okay, 1 Corinthians 4 for our Wednesday evening service. Uh, good evening, Facebook and church. We're glad you're here. Let a man, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. You know, faithful is 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 a hard it's a hard thing uh just just give me some give me a handful of faithful people that are faithful to the lord faithful to the church faithful to the things of god faithful to their husband faithful to their wife faithful to their mom faithful to their dad just give me some faithful people I'll tell you what it it it'll go a long way if you just if we just prove ourselves to be faithful, amen. Not always being uh, you promise this and you promise that and you never come through. You know, I mean, how sad that is. Unfaithful. Some people you can. Uh, sad to say this, but some people you can almost count on they're gonna let you down pretty regularly. You can't. You can't take much what they say for a hill of beans, you know. It, it, not much to it. It required the steward that a man be found faithful or a woman. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of a man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, verse 4, 1 Corinthians 4, 4. Uh, yet am I not I hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. So the Lord's my judge. You're not my judge. I'm not your judge. The Lord's our judge. You understand? We go around wanting to judge everybody and criticize folks. And and uh, why don't, uh, did you know the Heavenly Father committed all judgment to the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, He's He's the judge. Judgment's been committed to the to the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse five. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. Boy, then it's all going to be known. We're going to know the beginning from the end. We're going to know the lie from the truth. They know we're going to have to explain nothing. We're not have to try to figure nothing out. It's all going to be as clear as the nose on your face. Amen? Until the Lord come, who both will bring the light, the hidden thing. You know, a lot of hidden things. Sometimes I think back in situations. I'm an old man, and I've been preaching a long time, and sometimes some certain things happen, and and uh, I don't get it. I mean, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I don't know why things happened the way they did. I, uh, you're probably the same way, but you know, one day, one day it's all going to be plain. One day it's all it's going to be as clear as can be, and you'll say, "Wow, look at there!" When we see the Lord, Amen. It's going to be good. Bringeth to light the hidden things of darkness. I'm thinking about something I'm not going to talk about it because they ain't good to talk about it, but I think about a dark situation in my past that it, it involved me because it involved my church and it involved some things about me. It didn't really involve me personally, but it did in a way, but it didn't in another way. But, uh, I don't understand it for nothing. I don't understand it. But one day, the light's going to shine on all that. And I'll see, look at there. That's that's what it was all about. You see. Bring the light to hidden things of darkness. And will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. They didn't know what my heart is. And what you don't know my heart, I don't know. But God knows all of our hearts. You know that? Isn't that a wonderful thing? God knows our hearts. That's it. I guess it's, I don't know, I can't figure this Facebook out. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, verse 6, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that 
no one of you be puffed up one against another. See, we got a we, we got a problem of uh, I got the problem, you got the problem. Sometimes we we get a big opinion of ourselves. You know, we we think we're somebody. We think we know more and we're better. What you know? You know what I'm talking about? You ever get that way sometimes? Well, sure you do. I do. It ain't right, but we do it. You know, it ain't right. But but that's the way it is. And of course, Paul is warning this carnal church, uh, uh, the Corinthian church. No one of you be puffed up. You know what puffed up means? That means pride. It means you get proud. Amen. Yeah, that's what it means. You, you puffed up. You're like a blowfish. You know, you get all puffed up. <laughs> Look at here, now here. See, Paul gets down to the nitty gritty sometimes. Sometimes this preaching is just down to the nitty gritty too. This preacher's Bible. For whom uh, for who maketh thee to differ from another? Okay. What, what, what makes you better than someone else, huh? You think. And what hast thou that thou hast not did not receive? If if God didn't give it to you, it's nothing. If God didn't give it to you, you received it. By grace, through faith, amen? Your salvation, your gifts, anything about you, it's been received of God. And if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory? You ain't nobody, I ain't nobody. If we receive some benefit of God or receive some gift of God or something happens that honors God, praise God, give them to, to God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Amen. Wonderful. To God be the glory. For if thou hast not received it, verse 8, now ye are full. Now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God I did reign, that we also might reign with you. Verse 9. For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were pointed to death. Now see these apostles, they were all, uh, 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 they were all uh, martyred except one. Uh, uh, which one died of old age? John, the only one. Yeah, John died of old age. All the rest of them were, were martyred for the cause of Christ because of their Christianity. They were killed. John's only one. Uh, 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 he died of old age on Patmos. And as it were pointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world. You see, a true Christian and, and the godlier you live in Christ Jesus, the more of a spectacle you'll be or, or, or the of, of a... It, what it means here by spectacle is shameful. As far as the world's concerned, I'm shameful as a preacher. If you're a real good Christian, you're shameful. You're mocked. You're scourged. You might even be killed like all the disciples were except old John died old age. He's only one. A spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Verse 10, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. See, what he was saying is, uh, what kind of Christians did we have here at the church at Corneth? What, what kind of Christians? They are worldly, weren't they? So they, they're getting on, you know, worldly Christians, they get on pretty good with the world. You see, they got all of them. These Christians uh, uh, in the Corinthian church, they're getting on a lot better with the world than Paul. Paul was this old crazy preacher. He used to come in every once in a while and talk to him, write him these tough letters. You know, that was Paul. But uh, uh, they fit in pretty good. How do you fit in with the world? He said, I fit in pretty good. Well, shame on you. Yeah. Yeah. Just like <laughs> my friend, I remember, he used to call him Mr. Bus, uh, Wally Beebe. Wally Beebe would always come up to you. He'd see at a conference or something. I'd see in a Bible conference. He went all over the country. He was a Mr. Bus. He taught churches how to bring in children on buses. He's great at it. He was real good at it, especially. Walter Beebe come up to you, and, uh, and, and and he'd say this. He'd say this. a trick question. He'd come up to you and say, Hey, Victor, how you doing? How's the world treating you? And then Victor would say, Oh, treating me good. 
Something wrong with you, then. You ain't much of a Christian if the world's treating you good. That's what he'd say. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. If the world's treating you good, you're probably a sorry Christian. Think about it. Huh? Why'd they treat these, these worldly Christians in Corinth uh, good? Because they're worldly. Why was Paul despised? Because he was godly. All oh, that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Mark it down. You love the world and the world loves you. You're in trouble, Christian brother and sister. Even under this present hour, we both, look at look at here, Paul. We hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted. That's people beating on you. I've never took no licks for Christ yet. Ain't no one punched me in the nose because I'm a Christian yet. I ain't never even been spit upon. I might have someone throw a track down and rip it in half, but that's about the big persecutions I've ever had. Huh? Amen. See, we, we don't we don't know what the, I mean I mean they these Christians in the New Testament, as they say it today, they went to the wall, man. They 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 gave their life for Christ. I mean literally they did. Which some do across the world today. In Muslim nations and communist nations and and uh, uh, others in India and the Hindu nations and and uh, wicked ungodly nations, they give their life for Christ even today. Verse twelve, First Corinthians four, and labor working with our own hands, being reviled. And look at this, being reviled. What's that mean? You treat it real bad. So, uh, what did Paul do? We bless. Being reviled, what happened? We bless, amen. <laughs> Being persecuted, we suffer it. Take it for Christ, amen. That's tough, isn't it? We want to get back. We want to fight back. We're right. Oh, no. Verse 13, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world. Look at there. This is what Paul was. This is what a good Christian is. This is what a good Christian will be today. And are the off scourging of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but uh, as my beloved sons, I warn you. So he's warning them, saying, look, you got it made. You, you worldly Christians in Corinth know why you're worldly. You start sticking up for God, you're going to be buffeted. You're going to be hated. You're going to be killed like I. That's what Paul's telling them, you see. Verse 15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. You see, Paul won a lot of these people to Christ personally. He was a personal soul winner. People that I know, I've got people that I've led to Christ all across the country. And uh, usually, I mean, I, I've been, I'm, I've led some to Christ in other states too, but mostly, uh, probably most of the people I led to Christ was in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And they've spread all over, spread all over, gone all over. Uh, but they're still, uh, they're my converts, they're my children. I led them to Christ. Amen? Woohoo! I love that. Isn't that wonderful? What a joy it is to be used of God to lead someone to Christ. That's what we're supposed to be doing. I've begotten you through the gospel. Let them to Christ. Amen. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. No, I, I, I know where I am. Be ye followers of Christ. Huh. Huh. Followers of me. Doesn't say followers of creed, but why did Paul say, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me? I thought we we're supposed to follow Christ. And why did Paul say, Follow me? Got any idea? There's a reason for that. Because he was following Christ. If I follow Christ, I can ask, I can ask, uh, what's your name? Lieberstrom? Then Lieberstrom can follow me here. <laughs> Victor can follow me. 
That's a good German name, you know, Lieberstrom. <laughs> Not German. That's, that's a good name, though. I like that. Yeah, Lieberstrom, you like that. I'll, I'll call yeah, you Lieberstrom like from now on. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a composer, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Lieberstrom, yeah. Wherefore I beseech you, be followers of me. For this cause have I sent you, Timotheus, who is my beloved son. So what uh, what, did, what did Paul mean that, uh, that Timothy was his beloved son? What did it mean? He led him to Christ. Is his convert? You got you any? Got you any converts? How about it, Facebook? Got any converts? Yeah, hey, I don't know about that. Well, you, you better get some. They sing that song where there be any stars in my crown, in my crown. Daniel 12 tells us about that. Tell us about that. That uh, they that turn many to righteousness, run them to Christ. It'll be like. Uh, stars stars in your crowd winning souls that's all that matters nothing else matters but people I get saved that's all I can get saved you can get saved that's what the great commission is all about that's what Christianity is all about get someone saved and teach them to do what get someone else saved and multiply 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 that's the name of the game it ain't about building pretty buildings or whatever preaching pretty sermons it's about winning souls like I try to win that fine young man Lord willing I might see him in his group tomorrow that college group and, and, and I'm going to see that I want to see that uh, fellow saved amen and I want to see his people saved because uh, that's my job that's your job it's your job it's your job it's your job to get people saved that's it Sent Timotheus, who is my beloved son, and faithful in the Lord. There we got that word. Remember, we started off this chapter with faithful, remember? Faithfulness, amen? He could send Timothy. He didn't have to go himself. He could send his convert, Timothy, and he knew that he was going to win souls and teach them the right thing. He wasn't going to, wasn't going to pull no monkey business, you understand? He was what? He was going to have someone that knew about the, the meat of the word. It wasn't just baby Christians. Remember like we talked about this morning, them baby Christians? Had to feed them with pablum and had to feed them with Gerbers and, and everything. And, and uh, they're just little old crybaby Christians. Amen. Too many of them around. <laughs> who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you in the remembrance of my way. So his convert, Timothy, would bring to remembrance Paul's ways but were they Paul's ways? No, they were Christ's ways. You see, you get grounded in the faith. You win someone else. You ground them in the faith to get another, to get another, to get another. You win the city. You win the state. You win the world for Christ. Go in all the world and preach the gospel to whatever creature. But my ways which are in Christ. As I teach everywhere in every church. He said, same old thing. Paul just said he's got to win souls, get a Timothy saved, get someone else saved, teach him to get others saved, and then go on. Now some are puffed up. There we go. That's the pride again, puffed up, amen? We get puffed up like a blowfish sometimes, don't we? We want to argue with folks. Remember when we talked about this morning in chapter 3? I'm of Paul. I'm of Cephas. I'm a... Did Paul die for you? Did Cephas die for you? Did Varga die for you? Did anybody die? No, Christ died for you. Amen. Let's just all be a Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let's just all be for Christ. Forget about us, or Paul or Cephas or anybody. Now some are puffed up as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly if the Lord will. And will know not the speech of them which are puffed up. You see, Christ don't like proud people. Paul didn't like proud people. He liked, Tim he liked Timothy because he was a follower of Christ, a follower of Paul, a follower of Christ. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in time. Quit talking about it. Let's see some power of God with people getting saved and we live in the right life. Amen? That's what it's saying here. For the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, that's, 
that's our that's our lives. That's the way we live every day. The kingdom, the Bible says in the scripture, the kingdom is in us. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The new Jerusalem is going to come down here. And then, of course, we're going to have the literal kingdom of the new Jerusalem going to be here. That city four square. Amen. Isn't that going to be nice? But now the kingdom is where? It's within us. Amen. It's within us. That's what the Bible tells us. For the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod or in love? What did it say? Paul says, I can get tough on you if I need to. Sometimes a preacher needs to get tough. Sometimes a Christian leader needs to get tough. Sometimes daddy needs to get tough in his family with mama and with the kids. That's the way it is sometimes, you know. It says, shall I come unto you with a rod or in love? And in the spirit of meekness. I like this love thing in meekness. It's better than a rod, isn't it? I don't want God to come to me with a rod. Yeah. I want him to come to me in the spirit of love and meekness. Amen. We're done. Chapter 4 is done. Amen. Glad you came to church tonight. Glad you came on Facebook. This ain't real long tonight. Shoot it to someone on Facebook. It'll help them. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Lord, if there's anybody out there on Facebook not saved tonight, I pray they get saved. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Help us to learn from this fourth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Become a better Christian because of it. Not puffed up. Not like a blowfish. Not carnal. Not fussing with one another. But in love and in meekness, help us now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.